So like I was saying, once you get the hang of this stuff, you really only need to do it once. Because after that you can create a template like this one, uh, with a whole bunch of ready-made balloons and panel gutters, and just drag them in for each page you do. This is my template, and at left you can see these ready-made balloons and tails going in both directions and in 360 degrees, different shapes. Here's also a little no text thing that I drag in when I have no balloons at all because just for technical reasons it helps with the export to Photoshop so that those layers do exist. There's a little caption. I don't have many captions in this book so I didn't bother to make a lot of primitives for that. And then I have the panel gutters. Now you notice the big R, that's because this is a right hand page. The orientation is slightly different for each one so I make sure not to get confused. And then because I have a, a kind of a standard grid, most of my pages are divided into two, three, or four tiers, I have a few standard placements, which means I can drag the horizontals in uh, you know, from their, their pre-positioned spots, and I can drag the verticals in too. And then over here in the Layers palette, you can see my standard layers. I have the big blue box behind everything so I can see what I'm doing, just like before. I have a rough layer where I place the rough version of the pages. The way I work, I do a, a just kind of a rough sketched version of the whole book, and then I letter the pages from that. And then I have five different balloon layers, so I can have lots of overlap if I need them. Then uh, the lettering, the actual text. I I have some kind of weird names for my layers, but that's doesn't matter why. You know, obviously you'll be picking your own. My gutters, that's these guys. Page number. The page number is over the gutters because it exists outside of the panel window. So because of that, it would be obscured by the white you know, window material that I've created. So any, any element like that that isn't inside the panel has to be above, on a layer above it. Then this outer box, that just shows me sort of the outer dimensions that I'm going to be trimming from when I export to Photoshop. More just a visual aid for me. Uh, you don't have to do that. And then I have a little grid to help me with positioning the layouts when I paste it in. So here's what lettering an actual page looks like when I use this template. First I go to the rough layer. Place. Again I have these um, these rough versions of the pages already ready. Already ready. Just make sure that's positioned. Again, I'm using the grid for that. Once I'm happy with the positioning, I can just turn that off. Don't really need it. I generally lock any elements that I'm not using, so the rough is now locked. And then, because I have a lot of bleeds, I even have that outer box dragged in as I go. So I go ahead and on the gutter layer, I'm going to select just a whole bunch of these gutters, copy them, so I can always come back to them if I have to. And this one's mostly on, based on a 9 grid, so I'm dragging those particular gutters in. So there you go, that's a perfect 9 grid there. But because I have this panel here, it's kind of unified. What I'll do is I'll just go ahead and pull that up. Oh, I'm sorry, both of those panels, in fact, are... There we go. And then that one, pull over this way. There you go, that's the grid. And then just a couple of balloons in this page, keeping it simple for the sake of the demo. I'll zoom in slightly. And I'm just eyeball it, figure well, that one seems to be about right. And in fact, that one's similar. Going closer, and here's a trick. Um, because my balloons are obscuring the layout a little, I can hold down the Command key, click on the balloons area, and suddenly the balloons are just outline view. And that helps me to see through. Again, nice and simple page.
Again, for a lot of you, you might find that you're pasting in text rather than typing it in if you've decided to, uh, to have a separate file for that stuff. There. This part's not rocket science, obviously. Much more complex for some pages. Okay, now I'll go and bring back those balloons so they're opaque again. And fortunately, we have the align palette is just directly above our dock. Makes things easy. And then in both of these cases, I'm using, whoops, sorry. Ah, want to lock that. want to lock the gutter layer. It's very important. Ooh, and I didn't do the panel, or excuse me, the page numbers. Let's do that now. This is page 11. There we go. Lock that. Lock that. And then... We're going to want, I think, straight tails for both of these. And that's it. This page is done. But of course, we have all this crap around the page. We need to get rid of that before we export it to Photoshop. Now, it's always good to hang on to a copy of the one with all the crap in case you want to make changes. But for now, we'll just get rid of them. But figure, figure that we made ourselves a copy of the file. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all the extra gutter material, delete all those extra balloons, delete the big blue box because it seems to confuse the program when exporting and then we're gonna go ahead whoop I'm gonna save it first there we go we're gonna go ahead and export to Photoshop I'm gonna pick grayscale 1200 dots per inch keep text editability editability rather it's very important we want to be able to edit the text even when it's in Photoshop. This takes a moment. There we go. Uh, don't save. And finally, here in Photoshop, I have this series of actions that just go through automatically. As soon as I get the document, it renames uh, all the various layers, it adds layers, it does a, a billion different things to it. But I only have to press a button, literally. I just I hit the button, and you can see in the Layers palette how the whole document is being restructured. The whole thing uh, would take only about 15 seconds, but because it has this really um, computationally intensive stroke that it's adding to a couple of layers uh, that's 250 pixels wide, the thing goes by a, a little bit slower. But basically, when it's done, I have this document that I can begin drawing in immediately. And uh, and I can also come back and edit the text if I need to. I can make any changes that I have to. I rarely have to go back to the lettering. I can just go straight to the art and have pretty much the perfect work environment. So for instance, if I see something I want to change, oh look, see how that's just slightly high? And go into the lettering, find that particular balloon, and just lower it a little bit. I can change his name if I want. <laughs> I can resize, uh, you know, this this balloon if I want. Move things around doesn't matter. And that bottom layer now is just a nice light blue, and I can begin to work on my roughs. Here, are my rough versions, and then just do the finished art on top of it until the finished version, which looks something like this.